Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Families Fly Free podcast. Today, I have got a topic that I know so many of you are interested in, um, and that is Hawaii. So, so many of you come to me and say you want to learn how to fly free so you can take that bucket list trip to Hawaii. And we have seen so many of our members um, be able to do that. So um, it's a topic I'm asked about a lot. And so I wanted to bring in some experts to really dive into their best insider tips on how to save and what to see and do, uh, the best beaches, all that good stuff in Hawaii. So I have got with me today, Jordan and Erica of the Hawaii Vacation Guide. And um, my family has been lucky enough to go to Hawaii twice since 2021. So we went to Maui and Kauai, and that's how we came across them to start with when we were planning our trip to Maui in 2021. My husband was doing research online and he came across their awesome videos on YouTube. And so we just sat together as a family and we pulled up some of their videos about Maui and we connected it to the TV screen. And then we watched, you know, what there is to see and do in Maui, which was super helpful just to get the visuals of it. Um, and we use that as sort of our introduction of where we want to stay and what did we want to do and, and all of that. So that's how come we came across them. And then weirdly, this summer, um, I had reached out to them about doing an interview like this. Um, and we happened to be in Santa Barbara at the time, and they happened to be in Santa Barbara at the time. And so we got to meet in person, which was super fun, super weird coincidence there. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to pass the baton over and let you guys um, introduce yourselves. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank thanks. you. Yeah, it was really, really funny to get to meet up with you in Santa Barbara. And so nice. What a what a pleasant experience. And it was. it was. It's always nice to meet people who also share a love of travel and yes. Hawaii, Hawaii and all of this. So we, uh, as Lynn said, I'm Erica. This I'm is Jordan. Jordan. And we have made our love of Hawaii and travel our job through creating the Hawaii Vacation Guide, which we have the ambitious goal of making it the most comprehensive planning resource out there. On the entire guys. internet, yeah. <laughs> On the entire internet. <laughs> so yeah, we also call ourselves YouTubers because we enjoy making YouTube videos and sharing Hawaii. We find it such a great medium to, yeah, like Lynn said, showcase the islands, see what you can do, share our experiences, because mm -hmm. that's all we have is just our experiences, see if that's right for somebody else, see what they want to do for it. And then we have our website too, the hawaiivacationguide.com. Um, which is our collection of all of our best articles that Eric is so good at writing. Yeah. And when, so, you know, when we're talking about Hawaii, like you want to see Hawaii, right? That's what's so great is then you can lay eyes on all these beautiful things that you're about to see because I know. half of the fun well. of travel is the planning, I think. I know. I agree. I yeah. feel like you get to experience it twice. The first time when you're planning it and then the second time when you're there. Totally. Mm -hmm. And they are just, um, they have lived on Maui for five years. Is that right? So we lived on Oahu for two years and then okay. Maui for three years. I was lucky. My work took me over there to Oahu. And then Erica has been traveling there since she was a little kid. And then I tagged along when I met her in college. Um, I, I'm from Michigan originally. So going to Hawaii was like a trip of a lifetime where, especially in Northern Michigan, it's, it's a huge trip. It still is a huge trip. So, um, I was lucky to go when I was in my twenties and then, yeah, kept going ever since yeah. over and over and over again. Over and over and over. Yeah. yeah so they are true experts because they have well. <laughs> first hand. I, mean, I think that's a big difference when you have a local perspective on something that's totally different than someone who's been a lot of times, I think. Um, yeah. I feel like we... Uh, it was, yeah, we yeah, kind of have like a hybrid local visitor perspective, how we looked at it, because yeah. I feel like a lot of locals sometimes don't get out and about as much. They don't stay at the hotels and things like that. So yeah, it's a nice true. hybrid look at seeing it and living there. We learn a lot more about how to help rejuvenate the islands and get the details on where to go and where not to go. And we and got to like go deeper into areas. So yeah. instead of saying we stayed at this one hotel, we were like, we've looked at every hotel in this area. <laughs> yeah. These are the ones we recommend. And these are the ones we like. Yes. And then you could do kind of the little like hop overs to the other islands and then oh, have oh, kind yeah. of that tourist that perspective, convenient. right? We did so many of those. Yeah, but so we're always fun. learning about the islands. That's what's nice. Been there so many times. There's still so much to learn and explore and try different things. And they're changing too. So yeah. it's always good. It's always I just saw I think it was Oprah was just in Kauai or something like that and was giving the hiking rave reviews. So, you know. Oh, uh, well, yes. Oprah's been there. Well, oh my gosh. Well, she has a place on Maui too, which is. Oh, 
Well, maybe yeah. she was just like raving she, about the Kauai hiking. Maybe she had oh, wow. never done that. Oh, wow, that's mm. great. Good. <laughs> she getting in our territory? Is I think, that what she's, I think doing? she's starting a Hawaii, a Hawaii vacation. She better not. Site. So trouble. Sounds so like it. Trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and where doesn't Oprah have a house? I feel like everywhere we go, Santa Barbara. That was one. Yeah, yeah, she has a in Montecito. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Oh, okay. like tell your ride. I think she has one there. So, oh, just, really? Wow. Life goals. I know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about over today. So, um, let's <laughs> let's start with you know, because we have a lot of first timers um, to Hawaii. That that's what they want to do. They want to plan that bucket list trip. Do you have recommendations for you know? Is there a better island than another for a first trip um, that you would recommend? It's a good question. Yeah, we've even made a video of why for first timers an article on it. But yeah. but for for islands, Erica. Yeah. So I would say we have we have some suggestions. Um, so if price is not a consideration, or if you are going to use a lot of lens strategies to well, book, if you're flying free, so flights are free at least. That's true. <laughs> um, so if you are doing that strategy and you don't. I would say Maui in general is the best island for first timers because I feel like it has the most diverse experiences. Yeah, there's just so much to do and explore in different parts of the island. And it still has a volcano, which is really cool and mm -hmm. great beaches. Yeah, and, it's a good option. And I would say the beaches are the best there year round. So yeah. Hawaii, which I think people forget is the, the Pacific Ocean is extremely powerful. You can get really big storms and swells coming mm -hmm. in. And Maui, I think, has probably a yeah. better number of beaches that stay protected but we're, it's just expensive because of the hotels yes. it's the, mo the most expensive island to visit for accommodations yeah. so if you're looking for a better more bang for your buck then head over to oahu uh because waikiki has just a lot of great value hotels that are still really nice and waikiki is a nice pop popular place to stay over half of hawaii's visitors go to hawaii or go to oahu yeah. So it is the most popular place to visit. And for good reason. You got the town, which is Honolulu, which is like Manhattan of the Pacific. So it has nightlife and a lot of things to do. But then you can escape to the North Shore, which is country. Yeah. And it's just like great beaches during the summer and jungle, great hikes, waterfall swims, all that good stuff. And it's the only island you can get away with not renting a car on. Really. Oh, yeah. Because there's good so, public transport. So mm -hmm. if you are looking to not rent a car and save that way, Oahu would be a really good stress. one. Yeah. yeah. Kauai is great for people who love nature and going out and exploring. And going on hikes like Oprah. Hikes. It's fun for honeymoon <laughs> honeymooners because it's more of a quiet place. Mm -hmm. um, and then the big islands for like adventurers. Like there's just so many great tours. We don't say you have to do tours in Hawaii, but boy, the big island has some really cool tours yeah. to go on. Yeah. Um, and then it's, of course, got volcanoes and it's just an erupting volcano. It's just it's really cool to go, especially for kids. So in general, to sum it up, in general, like Maui, like overall is the our first choice but specific if you want like better budget accommodations or more of a city feel it would be oahu unique experiences big island and outdoorsy things would be Kauai. and yeah i in my experience um i've been to oahu a long time ago maui and Kauai. but i mm -hmm. usually recommend maui also mm -hmm. because I, I feel like it's an in-between like oahu can be very busy and a lot of people yeah. on the beach in waikiki Kauai is super quiet. And so Maui is a little bit, I feel like in the middle of those two, there's things going on. You still have yeah. Lahaina and that for, you know, the town and shopping and restaurants and all that, but you can sort of get away and have that. Totally. That's a very good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can Absolutely. only island hop too, flying to Honolulu for a few days and then check out Maui also. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And in terms of like, I just had a member asking me, you know, what would be an affordable place to stay on Maui? And so we were kind of going back and looking through all the hotels again, not cheap. We do show, you know, how to stay on points or whatever. And there are a couple good options on Kanapali Beach, but um, is a vacation rental kind of a, would that be a less expensive option on Maui? So they're getting very expensive, <laughs> like yeah. shockingly, but yeah. you can yeah. still find some really good deals. Um I will say there are so many vacation rentals in Kihei, which is where you can find a lot of mm -hmm. better, like better priced options, especially if you're staying a block or two off the beach. That's where you, and Kihei is very walkable. So you can walk around that area a lot and just walk to the beach. And then also Northwest Maui in Napili, you can find some nice vacation rentals up there. But but definitely because the fees that they add on to it and just an average nightly rate, it's best for larger families if you're staying for more than a a few days yeah right? it would be for a longer stay you can save money but for mm -hmm. shorter stays it's pretty comparable to hotel like those costs. fees i know the fees are crazy 
They are crazy. Yeah. They are. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How about some of your favorite kind of hidden gems on the different islands that people might not know about? I think yeah. one that we would agree on is Hanalei Town. Oh Maybe yeah. That yeah, that's true. Oh, that's that is Kauai. such a, that's on Kauai. That, yeah, that, that is a really, really nice town in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause that area of Kauai is one that gets really bad with the waves and all that. Right. And the, yeah, a lot of rain because it's on yeah. the windward side. So it gets more, more rain and in storms and especially during the winter, about November through March, it's kind of hard to go swimming up there. It's very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. We're big on ocean safety. It's something after <laughs> living there. We want people to go to Hawaii and then be able to come back again. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're always trying to watch out for that ocean up there, but yeah, we're yeah. some really favorite hidden gems. Um, I would say one that we are really, every time we are traveling, we, or just all the time. We're always looking for farm tours because I really think that is such a unique way to experience the islands. Yeah. And meet, meet locals, have local food. And yeah, it's just learn the history, like mm-hmm. see the unique things that are growing there. Like, you know, oh, have try guava right off the tree yeah. and like understand, see how chocolate is grown. Mm-hmm. And so um on some of our favorite farm tours. So on Oahu, um, Oahu actually doesn't have as many farm tours as some of the, as the other islands. Yeah. Um, but we did a farm tour at 21 degrees estate. It's a cacao farm on yeah. the windward side. So that was really nice. Yeah. yeah. And then the big Island, there's an octopus farm where kids can, you and adults can go and actually touch octopus yeah. and, and play with it. And they have them. It's like a rehabilitation center and a research center. Yeah. So by visiting it, you're funding the research. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then another big one is OO farms on Maui. Um, that's a great farm to table experience. Oh yeah. You go it's in so the up country, cool. you can bring your own wine and you do it tour the farm and coming from Michigan, I still get a thrill from just picking oranges and lem- lemons right off the tree and bananas. bananas. I mean, everything's grown on this farm. Your salad is right there. And it's a gourmet chef prepares a meal for you. It's, it's pretty it's amazing. It's a really cool experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Farm tours. Um, also, our rigger canoe is a great cultural experience. Get out on the water. You can see sea turtles out there paddle a, a you know an ancient Hawaiian canoe. It's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And I we like that because it's not a super expensive tour. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not a very long tour, so you can take it right from the beach. Um, it's usually an hour. Sometimes they let you go snorkeling off the canoe. Sometimes it's just paddling around. Yeah. And And then, yeah. And then our favorite tours on the big Island is manta ray night snorkeling. And that's just like, wow. (laughs) A lot of people didn't know about that one. So it's just, yeah, it's, that's really cool. You actually go swimming with manta rays and they're massive. They can be like eight to 10 feet across, 12 feet across. They're so graceful. They come within an inch of your face. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something worth checking out. It is. It is yeah. very cool. Mm-hmm. And do those, like, I know in Grand Cayman, you know, you can, we've done the swimming with the stingrays, but oh, they, yeah. they sort of congregate because they know they get fed. Is yeah. that the reason that it's it's natural and also not natural? Yeah. They, the yeah. hotels and restaurants used to just shine spotlights on the water, like back in the sixties, and then the spotlights cause photoplankton to congregate there. Then that bring in the manta rays. Yeah, so, so they're not like chumming the water or putting food in yeah. the water, but they're getting the the light, the food to the light to attract the food, which attracts the manta rays. Yeah. So is it like that bioluminescence? look oh, it doesn't glow or anything like no, that but you know okay. but you see the photoplankton floating in the water which is pretty cool and yeah. then you see them coming and scooping it all up oh my gosh yeah. the first experience like i did a little dot a snorkel from shore and you know it's pitch black it's nighttime so you are you know going in snorkeling ocean. out in the ocean at night and you're freaked out and then all of a sudden just this huge manta ray because you know there's the 10 comes. feet yeah. it just comes right below my nose and i was like oh my god <laughs> that was terrifying yeah. but so cool that um, is cool. yeah it's definitely yeah it's a great it's a very cool experience all right how about some favorite beaches I, that's what, like, I feel like when we've been to Hawaii, it's just this, con- it's like you go from beach to beach and you're trying to find the beach that you like, that you know, <laughs> that's your favorite one. And inevitably end up at one that no one has ever mentioned. I feel like it just, oh. Like, oh, we loved this one for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll start with Maui because I think Maui has the best beaches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm biased. Maui. I'm biased. Yeah. Um, but Kapalua Bay 
which is on the Northwest shore on Maui and Dr. Beach rated it as his favorite beach in 2018. So it's not a secret. Like everybody, and, everybody knows it's wonderful. And yes, there's a Dr. Beach. He's got this great website and it's great because he's usually either North Carolina beaches or Hawaii beaches, I feel yeah. like. And yeah. sometimes Florida makes a list, but almost every beach in Hawaii has come across his list at one time. But Kapalua is one, it's, one of the best. It's so beautiful. So yeah, it's, it's a, a semi-protected bay. Yeah. You can often find turtles. It's great for snorkeling. It's just, it has facilities there. I just really think it's a spectacular beach. Yeah. I really love it. My, my favorite flavor of the day is Anini Beach on Kauai, which is on the North Shore. It's close to Princeville and Hanalei. And I like it because it's really quiet. And like where Kapalua now gets very busy, me, because Erica talks about it all the time. But Anini Beach is really, it's just quiet. It's got a nice shallow reef um, where the kids can go out snorkeling. And, yeah. and that's great during the summer. It's very Anini chill. Anini Beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything, it seems like that was our favorite beach was on that side of Kauai. And I, it was one where like a river comes into it and... You could, it was good for snorkeling, but then you had some waves up by the, you know, had like oh, a yeah. kids thought it was great. They could jump off trees into the river and. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but they're also like, pretty yeah. up there. Yeah. They yes, are so is. pretty. Yes. Um, back to Maui. I really like Maluaka beach and that's South of Wailea. So okay. I'll say it again. Maluaka. With mm -hmm. And Wailea is South, right? Yes. Wailea yeah. is South and Wailea has some spectacular beaches. Of course, right in front of the hotels. Yeah. Right in front of the hotels. This is not in front of a hotel. So it's a lot quieter and it's just, I think it's spectacularly yeah. beautiful. It's funny. Our, our neighbors in Maui, they even know about it. Like it's yeah. just so, it's not a secret. It's we don't, secret there's no secret all. beaches that we, you know, it's, <laughs> everything's just, like been, you know, real, but it's, it's just, just a quiet place. Yeah. I think because it's not in front of a hotel, it's and it's stunning. It's stunning. Yeah. Malawaka Beach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, keep going if you like. If you, but... we have two more. <laughs> one more. Okay. One more. Ooh, which one do you want to do? I'll do Hulapoi. Okay. So Hulapoi Beach is on Lanai, also rated as a Dr. Beach favorite one. And once again, like, it's a day trip over to Lanai, which is the island next to Maui. You can take a ferry. You can take a ferry. It's 99% owned by Larry Ellison, the system, the, the, whatever cisco billionaire um oracle billionaire and but the beach is, is a marine conservation area it's, it's wonderful snorkeling same thing for the kids there's so much for them to do and run around um there's only the four seasons on there so it's very exclusive pricey movie stars walking the beach but it's just a beautiful beach we love it for the snorkeling it's so oh and beautiful. there's a keiki pond next to it so a kid's pond that's like a big tide pool uh, that they dynamited years ago during the plantation era out of the, 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 the rock. So it's this really safe place to take the kids and play. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. a commitment to get out there because you have to take a ferry. Um, and it's like an eight mile ferry ride yeah. off the coast of Maui. But minutes. it is. Mm -hmm. so but it's beautiful. worth it. We loved it. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. It's a few places where we will stay at the beach there all day. All we'll day. Be so entertained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about um, the area where Alani is? So we just joined Disney oh. Vacation Club this last summer. And so we do have a lot of members that go out there. I, it looks like, because it's sort of protected bays, isn't it over there? Yeah. yeah. Fun fact is we used to live there. That's where we lived. So okay. we lived there. Yeah. yeah a thing or two about that. Well. We lived there while the hotel was being built, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which was fun. Um, so yeah. it's Colina Lagoons. There's four lagoons or man-made lagoons. Um, and, and yeah, they're, they're gorgeous. They're like all the same. They're really cool. These crescent bays. Yeah. And, and they're relatively shallow, eight to 10 feet and no waves. So it's great for kids. And the Aulani sits right on lagoon number one one and with the four seasons and and yeah we made tons of videos about them they're beautiful to show off here's my tip if you're staying at the alani mm -hmm. um that beach can get kind of crowded with the four seasons because two the Hotel two trip. biggest hotels are on one lagoon if you walk just on the path down to lagoon two um it's so much quieter because all you have is one vacation rental building Complex, yeah marriott mm -hmm. um it's not a marriott marriott's oh, on lagoon oh, okay. three oh. yeah um, and so it gets a lot quieter on that lagoon. So just walk, walk right over. Yeah. The Awalani is an expensive place to stay. So it's nice to be a vacation club member or subscribers say that like, yeah, be a member. It helps a lot to be a member there, to stay there. Well, I've heard people say that's the best value you get out of your points. When you look at the rack rates of what mm. it would cost to, to stay there. So oh, good yeah, we, we stay there in June, June this year. And yeah. we, we had a lot of fun, especially they have like a full water park. Uh, yeah. They have a lazy river and all that. So we had, a, our son loved it. 
Um, but yeah, it's a yeah. pricey one. And that is on Oahu. I don't think I said that when I asked you that question, but yeah. just in case anyone doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's actually like 45 minutes away from Waikiki. So it's a very quiet part of the island and a very sunny part of the island. It's on the leeward side. So it's actually practically a desert over there. So it rains only a couple times a year. So if you're worried about weather, just go to Koalina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then right across the street, there's a nice little shopping complex that has like rest. Well, it's not shopping. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's just a bunch of restaurants so you can eat over there so you don't have to eat at the hotel the whole time. Yeah. So, oh, that's good. That's great. Because Disney can be a little expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. One more question um, on, I guess this isn't really beach, but what, what are your thoughts on the, um, the crater off of Maui? Molokini. Oh, Molokini. Oh, Great question. Yeah. It's debatable because we we actually didn't go there for years because you hear about it's overcrowded and it's not worth it. And after going on more snorkeling tours than we can we can talk about, yeah, um, it it is a great place to go snorkeling. It's a fun adventure. So like if you go to Hawaii, it's fun to get out on the water, right? Go like you can snorkel from shore, but it's fun to like get on a boat and just experience the water. Maybe that's whale watching. But Molokini Creator is a good way to get out on the water. It is crystal clear out there where usual visibility is like 20, 25 feet. I mean, Molokini is 100 to 125 feet. The yeah. visibility is spectacular because there's no runoff. It's this 250,000 year old crater out there in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Um, you won't see turtles there. No. But but the reef is gorgeous. We always see more eels when we're out there. Yeah. Um, and lots of great fish. So there's a lot of trips. If you want to, you can go out early. Um, it can get crowded, but I've never really been impacted by the crowds. Most people just stick to their boat. Yeah. You know, I would say, yeah, we enjoy the tours where you go out before the crowds. So yeah. like the earlier ones that they don't leave from Maalai Harbor, they leave from South Maui. Um, yeah. And they get out there and, and they get out there yeah. before the other boats show up. Yeah. Lanai's our other favorite place to snorkel. The, yeah. That's an island off of Maui uh, that we're talking about. Hula Poi Beach. That's the one you can see from Maui. Exactly. Yeah. From West Maui. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can see it from both. Yeah. 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 And Lanai's got great snorkeling too. Same thing. It's very pristine reefs out there. And it's fun to take like a, like a four or five hour tour out and there. And you'll usually see spinner dolphins on the way out. We have and a video turtles. of us going out there. Um, and the spinner dolphins hundreds. were insane. There were hundreds and there, yeah. it was just crazy. We were like surrounded by them. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. We got, when we did our whale watching tour in Maui, we got lucky and got in a pod of dolphins who were, yeah, it was just been like how great for kids. I was thrilled. I mean, they're, you know, flipping and, you know, yeah, yeah. I know it's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. So why spinner dolphins? I know even on the Kauai and the Nepali coast, there, there's always babies on the Nepali coast and they're like the size of a football and they're already spinning out of the water. It's just oh, the cutest thing I've ever imagined. Yeah. We were just on a tour on the Nepali coast in November and there was just this little tiny baby spinner dolphin like coming up under the boat and I was just oh like I was gosh. losing my mind it was so cute it, it is so cute, cute. <laughs> oh <laughs> amazing okay let me ask you about that I keep thinking now of all these questions that I <laughs> yeah <laughs> the Nepali coast so um so we when we were in Kauai we were going to do that we were going to do the boat tour but then you know we we saw you guys we saw the people you know talking about it, it can be very choppy out there and then so we we showed up for the tour and the captain was like very choppy day and so my son had gotten seasick on the whale watching tour in Maui the year before. So we were like, well, let's just not go for it. But so like, what is that really like? Like, is, is it, I, we've had members go and I, one was just like, oh, she totally got seasick. Her kids were fine. But, you know, um, I've been on the tour three times in the Poly Coast, different tours. Yeah. Every time someone's gotten sick and it's usually going out is easy. Coming back to the Harbor gets a lot choppier and people start losing, losing it there. You can take your, your, what's that called? Your Dramamine. Dramamine the day before is the big tip. So oh. that helps. But even during calm season, still be rough. Um, so, so yeah, it is, it is choppy. It can be a rough ride. That's why it's usually an age limit. So yeah, it's only usually only like eight and above for kids um, or five, oh, and, five above. and above. Five and above is like the lowest usually. Um, and no pregnant women or anything like that. Yeah. It can be a rough ride, but but it's a wonderful tour. It's so I mean, God, it's beautiful. It's a great way to not see coat. that. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, um, if seasickness is not a big issue, it's definitely something to do because it's, it's really beautiful. I will say we went on a sunset cruise up it though. Be prepared to get soaked. <laughs> yeah. We were just drenched by the end of it because of all the waves, yeah. you know, we don't mean it, it is. It was awesome. If someone though. says, what tour should I do? on Kauai, I would say Nepali coast, hands down. It's like, there's, it's so hard to see that coast because there's no roads over there. It's too, too wild. The cliffs are too big. So a boat ride is the best way to get the stunning views. You'll see Hawaiian spinner dolphins usually on the way out. 
You can do snorkeling. You, I even did a tour. We went to the Forbidden Island of Niihau to go snorkeling off a crater off the island because you're not allowed on the island. But yeah. suppose I've ever got to Niihau. Yeah. So it but, was like, there's a lot of cool stuff to do out there. But just know it's rough. Yep. Yeah. So. And it, it was like a long tour, at least the one we oh, booked. That was like so long. Long. Like if it was around. just for like two hours or something, we could probably. No, you're it. in it for five. Yep. Like five stuck. Five I think hours. you can leave from Hanalei. Um, because Hanalei is like red this side in Nepali, but in in fact, you leave for more like South Kauai because Hanalei is too rough to go out of. So only very few, there's only two tour operators who have permits to leave from Hanalei. And, and they can only, only go in the summer. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I just wanted to get your input on that, but um, yeah. okay. Let's talk about, um, you guys have young kids. So um, what tips do you have for families um, who are bringing kids? We kids are, we have a lot of traveling with grandkids too. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, so we have a four-year-old and a one-year-old, um, and we think it's a great place for kids, to be quite honest. Like, we, Yeah, not, not to be like, you know, selling Hawaii too much, but it really is it's a very family-friendly place to go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a domestic trip to a very international feeling location. Right? It's like the jungle and, and like, so your kids get to experience so much things that they wouldn't experience anywhere else. Yeah. So it's, it's a very unique culture out there with the language and, and the food and everything. So it's fun. And it's kid friendly because there's always a kids menus at the restaurants. Um, there's a lot of walking, especially around the resort areas. There's always like a, a boardwalk, especially like Maui, like Wailea has got a great boardwalk. So does Ka'ana Pali. Um, and like we said, the beaches are very, you can find the safe beaches to go to. And and in the ocean conditions are good. Great place to learn how to snorkel. Uh, and there's there's hiking and some of it can be really challenging, but I will say our four-year-olds, we were just on Kauai and we did like a three mile waterfall hike. We were surprised. We thought it was only going to be like a mile total out and back. It turned to be a mile and a half there. And, and it was it, challenging. Yeah. But yeah. And, and he, I don't know. It's like something about, something about being there. He like sucked it up and was, you know, trucking along. Cause there's and so much cool stuff for a kid. There's boardwalks so cool. and going through a river and yeah. you're in the jungle and there's, oh yeah. my gosh, a bird landed on his hand. It was insane. Oh, that was so cool. We'll make it a video so cool. on it. Like it was, it was yeah. It was, like, <laughs> so it just, it, it feels like if you can manage the flight, because it's a long flight. With yeah. Kids. That's probably the worst of it. Yeah. 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 Prepare. Once yeah. you get there, like everyone's in the same boat. Everyone has brought their kids out. There's so much. And the jet lag's bad, right? Oh, People yeah. always forget about the jet lag. I mean, it's five to six hours when you come from the East Coast. And like, it takes, you know, six days to, for kids to get through that. But you kind of embrace it too. Like just plan morning activities. Like we have, we're in our, we always talk about things to do in the morning, especially in Oahu, Waikiki Beach will be very busy at four in the morning. <laughs> with, with people just out walking, walking with around. their coffee and their kids running around. And yeah. all right, embrace it. there we go. Do you have any tips for, for helping him adjust to that? I hadn't thought about that. <clears throat> no. I wish I wish we had figured have figured out like no, a... it's like an hour day. You just gotta ride. Just I in, mean, yeah, almost like embrace it. Just Don't know that it's gonna happen. go to bed early and know it's gonna, yeah. We used yeah. We uh, used to live in London and we would come to the US to visit our family and we'd bring our son with us when he was like one and it, it just that was twelve hours. It that was, was yeah. Well, just, yeah, yeah, it was just and you know. just you just I don't know. <laughs> I you can't hack it. Through it. Through it. Yeah. yeah, someone's found a travel hack. Let us. Yeah, know. please let us know. Yeah. <laughs> so far, we just kind of just know it's. We'll get through it. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. So, how about some suggestions? You know, Hawaii is known to be an expensive place to visit. You know, with food and you know everything, groceries, all that good stuff. So, what um tips do you have to for free things or other ways that you can save that people might not think about? So, so we do an annual article, which I enjoy researching, is the, the cost for a family of four to go to Oahu for 10 days. And oh, it's it fun to see how that- significantly this year? Yeah, well, even last year went up 30%. This year was oh. 20%. But yeah, it's up to it's up to $13,500. And that includes some tours and food. And so, yeah, $13,500 is a lot of money. That's more well, than Disney, I think. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, okay. I would-, I would yeah, yeah, probably yeah. more, right? Well, that's fair. Yeah. It could be more or less. I mean, we do our trips and that's what works out pretty close. So um yeah. so yeah, so we have ways to save. Um, your biggest cost is accommodations. So by, by far, even mm -hmm. no matter what island, it's gonna be accommodations. So look for ways to save on that. Our biggest motto is book early. Yeah. So that goes for vacation rent, um, for 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 um, excuse me, for a hotel, for rental car, for your flight, book early and and see if prices change as the days get closer. You know, maybe get a good deal. Hopefully see what happens. We've had friends rebook hotels like the day before they arrive because the prices dropped significantly. Um, 
Another is if you can be flexible and travel during the shoulder season, the prices are so much yeah. lower. That's our number one tip. Yeah. So the shoulder season is September and October. And then April and May. In April and May. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, especially during Even the fall. With spring like, breaks in April. It's after it, if yeah. you can do it after spring break. Okay. Yeah, but they're always yeah. so flexible, but it's still a, a good time to go. Spring break isn't horrible on the islands. Yeah, yeah, it can be. It can be. Yeah. But yeah, it starts by Thanksgiving, it starts getting busy on the islands. And then early December is pretty good too. Um, but yeah, that's when you can find the best deals during those shoulder months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We really love September. Yeah. And October. Mm -hmm. Those two are like our favorite. We and think. peak is holidays. Um, it's Christmas between Christmas and New Year's. That is just, I mean, it's the most expensive time to visit. And, and the, the island is sold out too. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, like just twenty. Yeah, we're there twenty nineteen Christmas in Maui is almost in a. They had a problem where people were landing and the vacation rentals were scams, and, and they had nowhere to live. And they're asking people oh. to like, can you put these people up? Yeah, because uh, there's just nowhere to live on the island. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, there, we're were no, there were no hotels. hotels left. Yeah. yeah. On the so, whole, I so, was yeah. insane. So Christmas is a very Shelter busy and expensive time and a rainy better. time, but it's also kind of a fun time to visit. Uh, a last tip would probably be vacation rentals. It, it works out for a lot of people. Run the numbers, compare them with hotels. But like we said, for larger families. And if you're staying for a long enough period yeah. that, you yeah. know, the fees make sense. Um, and you can cook in the kitchen and save some money that way. And, you know, just snacks and things like that. It's a fun experience. You stay in some nice communities and stuff like that. Yeah, I was doing, I was doing our bookkeeping yesterday <laughs> and um you know our airbnb expense from we stayed on the big island and we had rented a small ohana house from a coffee farmer actually um so it was on his property and man that was a great deal yeah, yeah you can find good ones yeah vacation rentals are kind of very contentious right now in hawaii yeah. uh because there a lot of them are illegal not a lot of them some of them are illegal they're in residential neighborhoods that people don't mm -hmm. like also they're talking, like the rest of the country is experiencing with the housing shortage twice having a housing shortage so they're kind of pointing their finger at vacation rentals yeah. so we do have recommended ones on our website that we know are legal um and then to kind of look for like the resort areas yeah for vacation rentals like on maui erica mentioned kihei it's full of vacation rentals are very legal there waikiki is a tourist area they're going to be vacation rentals there they're illegal yeah so yeah yeah. some tips yeah and um you know we have ways you can use folks like the capital one cards are good ones to use for airbnb specifically you can mm -hmm. erase airbnb charges with your miles on that so that could help um mm -hmm. and of course you can potentially book some hotels in points um so i know when i last looked at the um Kanapali area it's been a minute but like the westin was 65,000 points per night. We like stayed a couple nights at two different ones. And then the Hyatt, which I liked better, um, was only 30,000 points per night. So wow. interesting. Um, wow. I'm surprised you like the Hyatt. Better. I know. I am surprised you like the Hyatt better. Well, you like the Marriott properties around Hawaii. The Marriott's are always very modern and updated. There yeah. are a ton of Marriott's for sure, wow. but oh, Hyatt yeah. is generally always a better deal to book in points. Like it costs oh, way great. less points. And I, I felt like the two resorts were on par with each other, you know, like mm -hmm. in terms of quality, but I just felt like the Hyatt felt more Hawaiian. It, oh. The Westin is more modern, but I can get yeah. that anywhere. <laughs> did <laughs> I feel like I'm in Hawaii, you know? Did it bother you? At, did it bother you that the beach is so small in front of the Hyatt? We really. loved the beach there because it was like at the end by itself. And we saw just a ton of sea turtles out there, which oh, we didn't cool. in front of the West. And like, it was just sea turtle nuts and there weren't that many people out there. And we oh. had a ball. Okay. Good to know. I like that. I like hearing another perspective because yeah. usually when we're at the Hyatt, I'm like, Oh, this beach. <laughs> I like yeah, this beach. It got hit by big King tides in the fall and like the, the palm trees are falling into the ocean. So oh, it's, they're well. having beach restoration issues over on the Hyatt side. So, um, but, but yes, we hear what you're saying. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. That was our thoughts on it, but. Um, okay. Cool. Um, oh, and I was just going to say that there are a lot of free things to do when you're in Hawaii too. Like, don't get like all the hiking and I just, oh beach hopping, like that's just a freebie. Just go. Explore I know I feel bad. We, we've been talking a lot about tours because we get excited about tours, but you don't have to even do a tour in yeah. Hawaii, right? Like I said, getting down the water, but yeah, yeah, you got the beaches, you got the hiking. Oh, you have food trucks. Yeah, food trucks, a great Sorry, way to I say it. Yes. Yeah, we love food <laughs> trucks. So yeah, really good food trucks on, on all the <laughs> islands. Maui and Kauai especially have, have great food trucks. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. But there's so many free things to do. I like there's and there's yeah. 
nice little museums. I I love well, the, museums, yeah. um in downtown Lahaina. The what is it? The Lahaina Heritage Museum. Oh yeah, right by the Banyan Tree, Banyan Court. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the Banyan Tree in Lahaina. It's awesome. Yeah, That's cool. you can do like you know ice cream and sit on the Banyan Tree and then go up to the museum and like walk around that. I think it's free or maybe it's a mm -hmm. five dollar donation and then walk to um, the harbor and watch the surfers out at break wall and it's just like yes. you can have a wonderful day without spending much money there and then you can walk totally. to the food truck park and have yourself a little mm -hmm. dinner and it's yeah. enjoy yeah. the outdoors in Hawaii that's what it's all about or snorkeling is free no snorkeling is free I mean that's yeah. your heart's content but yeah. we have to check the conditions though like you guys were saying I think a lot of people don't know that is you don't want to snorkel yeah and it changes from day to day right Oh, it changes significantly from yeah. day to day. It changes during the day, even. So, and so, so check lifeguard flags. Um, there's a lot of websites on there, like Hawaii Beach Safety. It'll tell you ocean conditions for it. Yeah. Um, just see what other people are doing. See if, if no one's out there swimming, don't go out there. Yeah. It's kind of like that. If you if in doubt, don't go out. Never snorkel alone. There's yeah. there's actually a great um it is Hawaii, Hawaii Beach, Beach Safety. Safety. They have and they have the conditions and then they have recommendations on how to snorkel safety safely and this was one that we they just released a study a few months ago about the ropes yes yeah, yeah. so it's it, it was interesting so people fly from the mainland and it's such a long flight that it affects uh, like the respiratory system so people they found people were dying when they were going snorkeling without like thrashing around and they couldn't they're experienced they swimmers and too. they couldn't figure out what was happening yeah and they interviewed wow. people who survived or who had been like pulled from the water and this is essentially this condition called ropes i forget the acronym but the respiratory system would just kind of shut down from snorkeling and so Long story short, wait one to two days after your flight before you go snorkeling. Yeah, or read the rope study to get the actual recommendation on yeah. how many days to wait. But mm -hmm. you shouldn't hop off the plane from the mainland and hop out snorkeling. Yeah, like that's very, interesting. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. It's, it's, it's glad, yeah, I'm glad they they did the study and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, and also, too, for marine right. life, don't touch the turtles. Stay, you know, ten feet away in the water, thirty feet. Don't walk on the reef. Yeah, you know, use reef safe sunscreen. Um, and what's a good way to find that? Reef safe sunscreen. sunscreen? Uh huh. In Hawaii, I would I would probably Just wait till you get there. Well, yeah, you or yeah. yeah, it's only only reef safe can be sold in Hawaii. So um, that's what's there. Our favorite's mineral based sunscreen. It gets complicated. There's no real definition of what reef safe is. So we just mineral based sunscreen, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide sunscreen, kid sunscreen, essentially that. So they think that's what's best for the reef at this time it and for us and for us too. Yeah. So yeah, oh, okay. that's all we use. And no spray sunscreens, please don't use those. Most of it ends up on the, the aerosols. Yeah, it, most it, of it ends up on the sand, which yeah. goes into the ocean. Yeah, um, they don't even allow them on tour boats. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Good. Um, all right. What are some things you wish more people knew before they showed up in Hawaii? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I would say one thing. Hawaii is so beautiful and there are so many wonderful things to do. Um, but just like where you come from, like where you live, there is private property. Um, and so just to respect the private property signs and the stay off the trail signs, because they're either there to keep you off someone's land or to keep you from getting into danger. Yeah. And keep, so, keep you safe. So yeah, yeah, there's a big sign, like, please don't cross this. Don't cross it. Yeah. And we see people do we, that all the time. And they get yelled at by the, you know, by visitors and or they locals hurt themselves and, and I just, have to be rescued. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, don't go off the trail. That's what it's that no one says, yeah, we don't say go off the beaten path. Please stay on the beaten path. And uh <laughs> yeah. you know, so this is good for your own safety and stuff like that. Also, you mentioned vacation rentals. Um, it's, it's tough right now because like the rules are all over the place based on every island. Uh, but a good rule of thumb is like, don't give vacation rental that's like right in a local community. You'll see them kind of group vacation rentals grouped together for a reason. So yeah. if one is like way off on top of a volcano, it's probably not legal. No one's, yeah. they won't, they didn't get a permit to operate that. Yeah. What else? Oh, um, support local businesses. Yeah. So it re it's relatively easy, really. I mean, most small, you know, most restaurants and shops are locally owned. Yeah. It really is. Someone's asking like for a list. It's like, that's hard to do. Most tour operators are locally owned because it's hard to run a tour um, with the day-to-day -day if you're not there on the island Yeah. for it, but it's a nice way. And then food trucks is just a great way to support local businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jordan and Erica are a great resource for 
like what tours should I take? So like before we went to Kauai, um, last year, I guess it is now, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I didn't know what were the best. We want to do an ATV tour. We wanted to do the Nepali coaster, you know, who do we pick? What are some good ones? Um, and so they actually have itineraries mapped out that you can purchase for them from the different islands for a different number of days and all that. And then they can recommend like, here are some good local operators to support that they, yeah. you know, I, th- I think that's very helpful. Uh, the other day, somebody, thank you. The other day, somebody left a comment on one of our tour videos and they're like, wow, you actually do the tour and then you recommend it. And we're like, yeah, we actually like do the things and yeah. then we recommend them. Yeah. What because, beaches, and yeah. then you can see it on the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the tour know, is going to be like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And we, like, yeah, we're like very positive and outgoing, like kind of like this, but to be honest, like if it's not in our videos or on our website, it's because we did it. And we didn't love it. Right. Yeah. It's like, we just, we just don't it's criticize either, other things, but yeah. if it's not there probably for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's because we haven't found it, but if it's a very obvious tour or uh, yeah. activity or someplace to go and we haven't included it, it's because we just, yeah, we yeah, didn't like, have a positive experience. There, there's a um, red, red sand beach in Hana. Like we never mentioned it once in our entire careers. And yeah. it's because like Hannah really, Hannah's tired of rescuing people out there and they've closed the trail numerous mm-hmm. times. And that's an example of it. And we still hear people talk about it. And even why don't you talk about this beach? And um, yeah, like because it's yeah, we've been there 20 years ago, we went there, but yeah, now it's pretty much off limits, but people can still, you know, go around the signs. So yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah. I will say, this is like just a quick note for anybody planning a 2023 vacation um, that you're, you're going to have a wonderful time. It's Hawaii. Um, but I would be weary in the past couple of years, there's been long waits for things like rental cars for getting into restaurants and things like that. And Hawaii, just like much of the rest of the country is experiencing a worker shortage. And so So there, be patient. There will be, yeah, Yeah, there could be long lines when you get off. I, I think to come ready that there will be some things that don't feel as optimal. That's what you say book early for restaurant it. reservations. A lot of restaurants never came back to full seating capacity because either staffing or because they didn't like the restaurant being so full. So yeah. book yeah, restaurants fill up faster. Yeah. Stuff like that. Book early is really just our motto. Mm-hmm. We I wish we lived by that motto. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> it, when we went to Maui in 2021, which was right when I think Hawaii had sort of started opening back up and people started going there. I mean the restaurants around the hotels there. I mean, it was like three weeks. They were booked out three weeks ahead or something like that. And we we're like, well, I guess we're not being there. Yeah. Um, but we found plenty like in Lahaina that were no problem. Um, and then like, yeah, I would say to that point, like in Kauai, like you might, the restaurant just might not be open that day, but totally. we have that here too. Like they just didn't have enough workers that day. And so totally. that, but there, there's another one that you can find or hop to the food truck or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, yeah, I feel like when you're like set on something, it can feel like devastating, but like, I prompt, like there is something even just as good, like next door or down the block or something. So just come with that perspective that you might need to be a little bit flexible. Yeah, we pride ourselves on our itineraries of keeping up to date like that uh, stuff and, and recommended places that have better chances of being open, especially on yeah. Kauai. That's a great example is Kauai. Yeah, Kauai. And yes. they really do because I get um, their emails from, oh. I got their Kauai one and it, they'll update you. Like here's an update from, you know, when you purchased the itinerary last year um, that you need to know. So Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and we, we ended up on Kauai, like at some Mexican restaurant on the main road there. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the, the little town there, but, um, and it was like right next to a goat farm. I don't know if you've ever eaten there, but you have to go there. It was hilarious. It was like, we were eating Mexican out on the porch and there was like a million goats out to our right. <laughs> Baby oh goats. Oh. So many goats there, you know, like, I don't know, doing all kinds of crazy goat things. And like for kids, this would have just been a little yeah, kid. Welcome to Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, My 18 year old and <laughs> 14 year old were over there staring the whole time at the goat. So, oh, that's like a two for one. You got a goat farm and you got dinner. <laughs> and that's excellent. Dinner. And yeah. Then it was one of those we just ended up there because wherever else we were going was closed. So, you yeah. never know. Yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So, we've all heard a lot about volcanic eruptions and such here of late. Is there anything that people need to, you know, take into consideration Evacuate. regarding that? No, um, it's, it's been great. Uh, this year was amazing. Our 2022 was amazing. Mauna Loa erupted. 
uh, after 38 years of being dormant. So that was, it was great because we've been tracking it for like months because the earthquakes have yeah. been swarming and the mountain was inflating. and Everyone's yeah. talking about it. Like, when's it going to happen? It's like, nah, it's not going to happen. It actually did. And then the volcanologists were right. It only lasted two weeks. So people who were lucky enough to be there got to see it. And it's great because the governor and the mayor of the big island were like inviting people over. Like it's a very safe thing to watch. So like um, you guys are excited about it. You're not, it's not something to be scared about. No, no. It was, I mean, we're, we're you guys are like, yeah, like, interrupted. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe if we lived in like the, <laughs> yeah, in Hilo or something like that. But, but yeah, no, it was a great eruption. So it was perfect. The volcanologist was saying like, this was a perfect eruption. Um, but then Kilauea stopped. So when Mauna Loa stopped, Kilauea stopped. And this all happened like early December, I think the dates. Um, but anyways, Kilauea just started erupting again on two, uh, a couple, like earlier this week. So um, on January 5th, Kilauea started erupting again. So Kilauea is right in Volcanoes National Park. It's super convenient. The, the part that's the main one at the park. You can drive around the caldera. You can look down and see the lava lake. You'll see the the sulfur dioxide, the fumes coming out of it. It's, it's still very safe. It's one of the most peaceful, active volcanoes in the world. Fingers crossed. Um, you there, can stay at Volcano House. Stay at Volcano House, which is this old classic hotel that's right on the crater rim. You can have oh, wow. a view of it. It's rustic. It's rustic. Yes, it's nice. It feels like a summer camp. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's beautiful. It's it's, it's, so it's awesome. great. So yeah, it's we love the Big Island. It's go to Volcanoes National Park for one or two days. You can even make a day out of it from Kailua Kona, where most people stay. And uh, and it's great. Yeah, there is bog, which is sulfur dioxide. Uh, but right now it hasn't been bad at all for the last. Yeah, Kilauea has been re-erupting for the last about a year and a half, two years. Um, the bog's been okay. You'll just notice a little more haziness in the sky in, in Kailua Kona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exciting. So it's like a bonus if you're going it to is. Hawaii and yeah. you're on an island yeah. where that's happening. It sure is. Right. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I put together a quick lightning round and then we'll come to a close here of just hot yes. topics that they can kind of give us a quick, their quick thoughts on. Okay. Um, so you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Luau's. Meh. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry. That's rude. No. <laughs> if... Jordan likes to say, if you enjoy going to Vegas for the shows, you will love a luau. It's not a requirement for your trip. They're very expensive, but they can be very fun. We've done a number of them. We've enjoyed them, but I don't think it will make or break your, the enjoyment of your trip. Yeah. It's a sticker shock for a lot of them. Some people are never happy with the food or the entertainment, but I think it's a fun experience, but it is yeah. a show. It's like a dinner show. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I will say my two older boys were totally bored. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was long and yeah, yeah. they are long. <laughs> my, my four year old, I we were actually playing in the grass for most of the our latest luau until the fire knife dance just came out mm -hmm. and then he was mesmerized. <laughs> okay, um, Turo. And so, for those of you who don't know what Turo is, um, that is an alternative to renting like a traditional car rental where it's like a car sharing service. You're borrowing someone's car that they own mm -hmm. and driving it while you're in. Uh, Hawaii or anywhere yeah. really. But, Airbnb for rental. It's cars. been a quite a thing in Hawaii. So yeah, it has. It's 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 good. So it's it's nice because it supports local companies, local people. The people are making extra money by renting out their car. It's usually very nice cars. They have to be for Turo. Um, and it's convenient. You can pick it right up at the airport and you're gone. Mm -hmm. We did on the big island and it worked out wonderfully for us, especially for in a minivan. We didn't save a whole lot of money. It, we definitely saved money. But it yeah, wasn't a staggering was, amount yeah. for like that. And then people have also brought, make sure what your car insurance will cover for such a thing. What's the liability on that? And I can't answer that question. So those are kind of like the pros and the cons on Turo. It's a nice alternative. And it's another like fun way to experience Hawaii, right? You get yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, and we, we use a Turo in Kauai and a benefit of bypassing that long car rental line. Just picked it up direct at the curb. We didn't have to yeah. worry about that. Yeah. Um, and you do with the insurance, check with your car insurance, see if it covers it. If it doesn't, you can buy theirs. They have a supplemental policy that you can buy there to cover go. it. Um, so we like Turo over here, but uh, I think it has, I don't know, Hawaii's had rules and regulations around it and because people are parking their cars. Starting and, to now, they're worried about park, park too much parking at the airport yeah. and things like that, but. They, ju they just yeah. need to sort out the how to. Up. Yeah, how to make it work so it isn't impacting, yeah, other things. So, yeah, they're okay. working on it. Uh, helicopter tours. <sighs> That's another one. So we, we don't widely advertise. You're good on these, Lynn. I, I think know. you read our newsletter. <laughs> We're hesitant to recommend helicopters for a very long time because, A, we've never been on one, and that's because of safety record. Hawaii 
helicopter tours have the worst safety record in the country on crashes helicopter because the weather is so incremental here and yeah it changes very quickly in hawaii so you could be going around to you know hit another microclimate all of a sudden it's bad weather the helicopter has an accident so um the average yeah so so they can be scary we recommend the ones with only the best safety record the past performance doesn't predict future results um so so we did go through safety records that we could find and we came up with a very very short list <laughs> of helicopter tour operators that on have not had accidents in the past on okay. three of the four major islands we have not found one for the big island yet we're still oh, looking wow. um but, but i will say people people from our newsletter community who go on them absolutely rave about them it's a great way to see the islands from above and like yeah. maui you can go over to molokai you can do tours over to hana skip the road to hana and just get the views and they're actually beautiful we've seen pictures i mean it's this gorgeous it's a place to be up in the air and see waterfalls that you can't get to any other way yeah. see the nepali coast on Kwai, which did, would be gorgeous did you yeah. do, did you do one on maui mm -hmm. or i'm i i'm i kind of feel the same way you guys do but yeah. Yeah. it just it just when you especially when you live there and it just you kind of hear frequently like oh there was another incident mm -hmm. oh the tail fell off that helicopter how in the world did that happen but it did <laughs> and they do create a lot of noise so a lot of the locals don't love them especially people like upcountry maui it's like a helicopter goes over every like few seconds well, in Kauai, yeah. it was just constant helicopters yeah. Yeah. overhead yeah just mm -hmm. constant yeah so that's, yeah, that's I, another thing from a, a long time ago. I used to work in television news and this is how I felt about private planes. It felt like every day there was a private plane crash that because the news hears about it, but it happens so much that it doesn't get pushed out to the world. It just is like, oh, there's another private plane crash. And I was Ooh. like, oh, I, don't, oh. I know it's like Alaska. I Whenever mean, you meet someone from Alaska, you're like, tell me an airplane crash story. <laughs> I'll have like 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, well, I had vacation rentals, but I feel like we've covered that topic pretty well in our discussion. So we'll we'll um we'll not go through that one again. But is there anything else that you guys want to share before we wrap up in terms of advice or tips or what you want people to know about Hawaii? Um, I think it's just it's such a wonderful place to visit and it's it's a really special place. I mean, we started this because well, we were living there and we just didn't feel like there were a whole lot of resources for us um, to kind of go out and like explore beyond like the very basic stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I would say if you are planning a trip to Hawaii, like don't just go off, you know, oh, my neighbor went and this is what they did and they loved it. Like think about what you really want to experience and enjoy because you have such a limited amount of time there. I'm assuming you don't have unlimited vacation time in Hawaii. Average trip is eight to 10 days. Yeah. So, so like think about like, well, do I want to be running around doing all this stuff? Do I, or would I rather just sit on the beach or do I really want to see waterfalls or like, am I really like super into seeing how tropical fruit grows? You know, there's just so much that it can be overwhelming. And I think taking a step back and thinking about what you are really excited about is important because there's so much cool stuff. Yeah. This is new, unique culture. It's just a cool yeah. place, right? With the people, it's a melting culture pot is of great. people like, from all so over the world. Laid back and fun yeah. and, you know, the people and are it, great. The people are wonderful. There's such a, there's, yeah, we, oh, we learned like so any much. Place in America, there's nice people and in it's the world. great in the world, right? Yeah. People are great and they're very hospitable there and you get that aloha spirit and yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Get out yeah. there, be friendly and enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy your time in Hawaii. Um, yeah. It's an expensive trip. So yeah, enjoy the planning. Like we said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I will say like the most memorable thing for us, I think, is swimming with a sea turtle. Like that's such a simple thing, but just that's yeah. amazing that you can just hop in the water and do that and it, and not bother them, but just see them in their natural yeah. environment was super cool. And and then the whale watching was I had never done that before, so I thought that was oh. pretty amazing. Yeah, I, would, yeah, I know I Eric is from California. I know and Cal. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, go ahead. What? It's, this is great. Yeah. It's, you hear about other whale watching trips, especially from California and like, oh, it's, you know, it's not guaranteed you'll see him or you see him off in the distance. Or it's cold. Or it's cold. Yeah. But boy, you go, I mean, you get like 15, they estimate 15,000 migrate down from Alaska over this like three month period. And then January, February is peak whale watching season. And like when you go to Maui, especially, they love that channel there because the mothers like to give birth there. It's, it's a natural breeding ground for them. So like, I mean, the guarantee whale sightings and no joke, like when you're leaving Lahaina Harbor, 
like you'll have to usually stop because there'll be whales in the boat, you know, entry area, right? Yeah. Like, oh, we got whale traffic again. And then they'll keep going, <laughs> yeah. right? It's just, they're just everywhere. And they stop thrill craft. So there's no parasailing or jet skis or fast boats in the water during that season. And it's just made for cruising around and watching whales. It's really cool. And they're so, they're just Never amazing. They're amazing. We've been on 10 whale watching tours. More than 10. Yeah. Well, well more just than in the last 10. Few years. And yeah. We just, ah, uh, never gets old. And here's one more thing I just thought of, which I had no idea this was something that you could do or existed was, is hearing the whales under the water. Yeah. And you don't even have to be on a tour for that. You go snorkeling. You just stick your head in the water. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to be snorkeling. Just stick your head in the water and you're like, listen, that is and you're like, oh, amazing. Those are whale songs. Yeah. yeah it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I remember I was like stand up paddling during whale season and I just got off and like, Dunked my head underwater. Right I was like, I hear him. I hear him. Oh, it's, cool. it's so cool. And it's funny to go whale watching. It's like there's a marine naturalist on the boat. So they're just giving you all this whale facts, yeah. all this information. And what one of my favorite ones is like every year there's a whale's popular song. And literally it will start because <laughs> there's all these different groups of humpback whales all over the world. And like they'll be they can track it. Like this whale song starts in um the Arabian Sea, and then all of a sudden, six months later, it's in the middle of the Pacific, the exact same song. So literally yeah. like they just, yeah, this is how they talk. And that'll be this song of the year. And then there'll be something else. That to follow is yeah. So fascinating. I love that kind of stuff. Like fill me up with that kind of info. They yeah. have a, they have a number one song. Yeah. 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 Top, hit. yeah. yeah. top 20, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us one more time where we can find you online. Um, you, the best place to go is to our website, the Hawaii vacation guide.com. And there we have in-depth um, island guides. So for each of the four major islands that you visit, we have in-depth guides on, free. yep, free, just written out there mm -hmm. where to go, where to stay, how to rent a car, how to get around, like everything you need to know what to do. Um, and we have our tours and activities section, which has our, you know, favorite tour and activity operators and a where to stay section to help you book hotels. And, and if you're more of a visual learner, check us out on YouTube. Same thing, the Hawaii Vacation Guide. You'll find us on YouTube and uh, enjoy our videos. We have playlists for each island and even a start here playlist with all like the, yeah, the top places to get started on your planning. Yeah. Oh, and we have free cheat sheets if you want to download those on our website. Lynn's on the newsletter. She says the best newsletter she's ever read in her entire life. <laughs> Didn't you, Lynn? <laughs> Did. No, for sure. Go check them out. Definitely go watch their videos, get their info. I'm a big fan of not reinventing the wheel on things. So why try to figure this all out for yourself? If someone has already curated, you know, a great list of tours and things to do and places to stay, that's just a good place to start at least. And then, and then build from there. So um, bottom line, everyone, we say go to Hawaii, make that a dream for your family. We can help you get there free with flights and maybe even with some accommodations too. And then check out Jordan and Erica for um, what to see and do when you get there. So thanks, guys, for joining me today. Um, Thank you. Thanks. And we will see everyone on the next episode.